Hello, Matt. Hey, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. It's been about 12 minutes since our last podcast, so great yeah. to see you again. How was your bathroom break? Anything going on on there? <sighs> no, nah, it's normal flow, I guess. <laughs> normal flow. I don't think anybody's like ever that. asked me that before. Yeah. Well, you're a young man. Who you, asked about time. bathroom breaks? You know, I went last time I went to the doctor because I'm getting a bit older. It always leads to a story, this right, man? <laughs> Matt's always like, this is not good. This is not going to go well. Um, it's the first time it's happened to me because I'm older now. So I went in for my well checkup and they had me uh, use the restroom and they had this like cone thing. It was weird. It looked like a, like a funnel, if you will. Right. And it went down into this container and the container sat on a scale. And of course they just said, Hey, you know, go urinate in this little hole in here. I'm like, okay. And then basically, you know, they're measuring like your flow. So back to your point, really? your flow. Yes. So and you I will have, have had your flow measured. <laughs> I've literally had my flow measured professionally. And I want you to know, Matt, and all the listeners that um, <laughs> when I came out, he said that I have the flow of a 16 year old. So I just want you guys to know that if anyone's concerned about the, the long term, um, you know, the podcast over the long haul, um, my prostate's in really good shape. Oh so, boy. Yeah. Good thanks. for you, man. Thanks. So I'm sitting here today with a clean and small prostate. And I want everyone to know that. So <laughs> you're welcome for that. And uh, my flow, I got my flow on, man. Okay. So let's let's flow this way. Let's do it this way. So I want to talk about leadership today, Matt. And I think right now it's really important that leaders are leaders, that they do what they set out to do. Like you like it or not, if you're a coach, you're a leader to your clients. If you're an owner, you're a leader to your team and your clients. Mm-hmm. If you're a president or a CEO of a corporation, you're a leader, right? And so now more than ever, leadership is important. So if you're in any of those roles, which most of the people listening to this are at least in one of those roles, um, like it or not, you're a leader. So you need to step up to the plate. So let's just talk about some strategies around that today. Um, And certainly I sit in that role and it's not easy, but I relish it, right? Like I take it seriously and it's, it's no more important than it is right now. So we're going to talk about leadership through the lens of three different things. We're going to talk about leading yourself. We're going to talk about leading your team and then how to lead your customers. Mm-hmm. And obviously all these are inter, you know, intertwined. Sure. So first we'll start with leading yourself. Um, this is the most important because if you don't, if your cup is not full, you can't pour into your team and your team can't pour into your customers or your clients, period. So essentially you have to get your shit straight. I don't know how else to put it. Like mm-hmm. you've got to suck it up, pull up your, pants, right? Pull your boots up and get to work. And that means a lot of different things to different people. But what you can't be right now is weak sauce. You can't hide out. I think Matt, you talked about earlier, what did you say about, about showing up or <laughs> CEOs dipping out or something? What, what? No, I mean, you can't, you can't not be in the building or everybody's, you know, where's Rick? Oh, he's been gone for months. I mean, that's not a, right. not a good sign. He's quarantined himself at home. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that is not a show well. <laughs> yeah, and if that's your deal, then everyone does it and you lead from that way. So I'm not saying you shouldn't quarantine. Please don't you know, read into it that way, but you need to show up in whatever capacity that your team needs you. Right. And the only way to do that again is to have your own you know, you say like, uh, you have your mind, right. Whatever those terminologies are for you, I say, get your shit straight. It just means show up right. And show up well. And so the only way to do that is to take care of yourself. Last podcast about entrepreneurship, we talked about a morning routine and I think it's more important now than it was when we talked about it last time, mm-hmm. right? Cause that was two or three weeks ago. And it was a, a literally a different world at that time. And so what do I mean by morning routine? Well, if you're a leader and you're spending the um, bulk of your time consuming your diet, your brain diet, consuming news and social media, you're not going to be in a right frame of mind, period. And you are in that leadership role. So you need to take that seriously and you need to control your diet and you control what's going into your brain. And so stay off of so much social media more so now than ever. Right. right? And stay, uh, stay away from the news because it is what it is and you need to be informed, but just consume enough to get the pertinent information where you can actually execute your job and your role clearly. Other than that, stay off of it because it's only going to work to make you more anxious and, and more scared and less of a good leader. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, second would be a, um, you know, a gratitude journal. We talked about, again, in the entrepreneurship, we use the five minute journal and I had a great example from Tony in our team meeting yesterday, we were doing a virtual team meeting and he's in Wisconsin and we would go around and we do props, right. For everybody on the team. That's part of our team meeting structure where we prop somebody on the team for something that we've seen that's above and beyond the norm. And, um, Tony propped the, the whole team and he propped us for 
you know, the five minute journal, which we gave everyone at our last all hands in meeting mm -hmm. and he held it up and said, I'm propping for this. Right. And there's just so many things that we all have to be thankful for that we can forget about at this time, especially when you're consuming a bunch of negative news and right. world ending and doom and gloom type of, of news, you know, sort of diet, if you will. Um, and he told a great story, you know, his, his grandmother's 99 years old and she lived through the depression and she was telling him stories of how there was, I think there was three kids in the family and they only had one pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. So only one child could go to school each day because they only had one pair of shoes. And right. I can imagine, I mean, we didn't ask a lot of questions, but I'm sure they didn't fit everyone either. So it wasn't that great. I'm sure they weren't the best pair of shoes and mm -hmm. they weren't fit everyone perfectly. You've got three aged kids trying to <laughs> jam into the same pair of shoes. But you know, here she is at 99 telling the stories and basically telling Tony, like, you guys are going to be fine. Right. Like, you know, and again, it's that uphill both ways in the snow stories, but mm -hmm. that's a real story. Mm -hmm. And that was a time that a lot of people lived through. Now, would we choose it or would we like to be in that time or would we embrace that? Probably not. But the fact is we're all going to be fine. And you, if you can look for the bright spots and the things that you are grateful for right now, it's certainly a better times than, than other times in recent history that people have gone through for sure. And they've been fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, I saw a meme and it's sort of tongue in cheek, but it's like, you know, your grandparents were called to war. We're called to the couch. I'm pretty sure we're going to be all right. Yep. And there's some truth to that. I mean, just keep things in perspective. Um, certainly it's hard and, and we're not underestimating the, the toughness that people are going through right now or the tough times for their businesses and personally what they're going through. But at the same time, Let's keep things in perspective. Yeah, make the best of it, right? Could always be worse. So mm -hmm. do a gratitude journal. Yep. Right. Uh, I would highly recommend the five minute journal. You guys, if you don't have it, essentially it's just write down three things every morning that you're grateful for before you get your day started. Um, also, I would say review your core values. If you've forgotten, if you don't have core values, build them, go back to that podcast about core values, but really look at your core values. So ours have a lot of things in them that will sort of frame my mindset for the day. So I go back to them if I'm like, Ugh, you know, if I'm getting a little sideways and believe me, I'm like I said earlier, I'm vacillating between, you know, we got this and the world's on fire, you know, depends on the hour, right? I think that's an entrepreneur's brain, but for the most part, we got this. Mm -hmm. And when I look back to our core values, it's like, bring your a game every day. Well, that means, okay, I need to get my shit straight. Like if I'm, you know, if you're someone who's emotionally upset right now and you're freaking out, like you can cry into your backpack in your car, but wipe off your face and get your ass into the, into your facility or, or onto your Skype calls with your team, do what you need to do because you need to stand strong. That's bringing right. my A game every day. Right. When we talk about humor with a little crazy, like we are, we have jokingly talked about so many ways we could go with this podcast today. That would be funny, maybe a bit off-putting considering <laughs> the times, but that's our personality, right? right? That's how we deal with things is we, mm -hmm. we use humor and it's a great deflector for us. So I look at each one of those core values, you know, keep it simple. It's like, all right, we'll, we'll talk about that with our messaging. Like what's our main message? Like just, just that, like right. if we can just nail that, we're all going to be good. So like keep things simple. Yeah. So work your way through your core values. If you don't have them, what better time now than if you've got some time on your hands to come up with them, right? And mm -hmm. that may force you to then read, right? So in your morning routine, read something positive. Read 10 pages a day. Take some notes on it, right? Set some core values. And then that will drive your behavior overall as a leader. Yeah. And then lastly, work out, for gosh sakes. I mean, you would assume that everybody in the fitness industry works out. But again, we talked about it in the Entrepreneurship Podcast. Not everyone does. And now is a great time to do that because we know chemically what that can do to your brain chemistry to stave off anxiety and depression, put mm -hmm. you in a better mood. And again, you have to show up as your 100% best for your team and your customers. Right. And one way to do that is to get your freaking exercise in. So I don't care what you do at home or you walk around the neighborhood, whatever that is, get your mind right. Get your stuff Dial yeah, basically, in. so you're putting your uh, auction mask on first, and then you're going to put it on everybody else to make sure everybody's okay, right? I mean, basically, I mean, <sighs> what you're, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's it. I mean, no, you're right. You're yep. coming in, you're coming to the facility, and whether, you know, you may not be feeling your best, you're going to show it, right? That's bring yeah. your A game every day. It is. And you're not reflecting maybe how you maybe feel on the inside just a little bit onto us. Right. How, how do you think I'm doing with that, by the way? I'm scared out of my mind looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Your face, your face says it all. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. So lead yourself first. Second, lead your team. Mm -hmm. And so in leading your team, it goes back to leading yourself. You have to show confidence and not false bravado because that's easy to see through. And that actually is more of a turnoff than it is a, you know, a positive. So make sure that you're just confident. And what I mean by that is you show up and everyone can look at your body language, which is 80% of how you, how you present yourself. 
they look at your face. Are you smiling or not? Are you saying good morning? You know, or do you walk in like, you know, you just lost your best friend, you're disheveled, you haven't had a shower, you know, it's like, how are you presenting yourself to your right. team? And even though you see them every day and there's familiarity, you're still the leader and mm -hmm. you need to own that role. And that means you don't have the luxury. Remember, you chose this. So you don't have the luxury to come in and be upset and not be emotionally available and look like a homeless person and have a frowny face and have bad posture. Same thing again, if you're doing like remote coaching for your team or, or what have you, you need to show up right. at the best part of you. And that part of that is that confidence. And body language, facial expressions, all that, that emits either confidence or not. Yeah. And your, your team will reflect anything you do, right? That's it. That's all right. They're going to basically remember, we're going to get to we're leading the team now and then we're going to lead the customer. And so your team is leading the customer. You're leading your team. So if you lead your team poorly, they're going to lead your customers mm -hmm. poorly and that's going to wreck your business. So confidence first. And second, with that confidence, like be real. And what I mean by that is like in our meetings, we've had you know, several meetings this week and um, it's, I don't have all the answers, right? Because people are like, what are we going to do if this happens? What are we going to do if this goes on for six months? What are we going to do if this happens for two weeks? It's like, I don't know. Like, I, and I legit don't know. But here's sure. what I do know, right? Here's what we will control. Mm -hmm. This is what we can do right now. This yep. is what we're doing. If that changes, we'll go here. If this changes, we'll go there. But we don't know yet. And mm -hmm. nobody knows. And I think that's being real. Like, I don't have all the answers. And pretending like I would would be disingenuous and i think that would turn people off and they would they would know that right Absolutely. so just like we got this we're flexible one of our core values also is to drive change that's real. that is really important right now i'm really glad that's a core value of ours i mean we didn't mm -hmm. think of it through the lens of this situation but certainly it works right Absolutely. it's like well guess what stuff's changing who's better equipped than a team that has five core values and one of them is to drive change us yeah and so maybe that's worth communicating right to your team if mm -hmm. you've got that as a core value so be real, you know, be upfront. Next would be available. And yeah. by be available, I mean, you know, your job as a leader is to support your team. And, you know, at some point as you grow, you're going to hire people like, you know, I hire people like Matt, who's smarter than I am so that I don't have to do his function. He's way better at it than I am. So what is ultimately my job? The more that my organization grows is like, I should be head cheerleader, right? And just making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing, holding people accountable, training them, and being the head cheerleader, mm -hmm. that's it, you know? And so you can't be head cheerleader if you're not available. And what I mean by that is you can call it open door policy, whatever that is. If you've got people on your team who are struggling, you know, um, you know, we've got like you, Natalie, other people on our team that are basically now homeschool teachers mm -hmm. who are not prepared for that. That's really, really hard. I can't even imagine like my kids are grown and gone. I can't imagine how hard that would be. Well, if somebody wants to talk about it and they're having a hard time, you need to step up and you need to listen and you need to be empathetic and you need to try to understand it from their point of view and just give them whatever support they need, whether that's time off or whatever that is. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, next would be meetings for your team, how to lead your team. And, you know, we upped our meetings to twice a week instead of once a week. And we did that because the situation's changing so fast. Yep. And so the messaging is also changing really quickly and that's really important. So I would say meetings, even again, if they're virtual, you need to meet with your team more often. Now you cannot over communicate during times like this. You mm -hmm. can't because you just assume that everyone understands the core values and they all think like you do and they go back to these things and they've got everything in perspective, but they don't. And, and that's not their job to do that. That's your job to drive that vision. So right. I mean, get, it's with all the information you talked about and it could be negative stuff. They can get swayed way sideways if you don't meet. Right. Yep. Exactly. So you meet often to make sure, even if you're saying the same things, you know, as a leader, you're like, oh, we just talked about that. It doesn't matter. People maybe didn't hear it the way that you thought they did. Mm -hmm. Right. So go back to the well, reinforce the things that you are doing well, drive confidence, be realistic, right? Don't be full of shit. So be realistic. And that's the best way to lead the team. Right. And it all starts again, get your, get your stuff figured out. Yep. Make sure you're the best person, bring your a game, and then pass that along to your team in that way, the way it's structurally meetings, open door policy, come talk to me whenever, mm -hmm. emit confidence, make sure your body language is good. You're smiling, you're, you're upbeat. And, you know, again, for us, it's a little bit of humor and that kind of like takes a sting out of everything. <laughs> and then lastly, Matt, it's lead the customer. And so if you do your job of getting yourself straightened out, yeah. you come to work and present the best part of you and mm -hmm. you communicate well to your team then they are going to help you communicate to your customers. And so here's a good example of, of leadership. And Matt, I'm going to prop you for this. Um, the other day, you know, we're ha we have a lot of clients on freeze. We fortunately haven't been forced to shut down yet, but we know that's more than likely imminent. And so we have quickly pivoted to this online virtual business. 
And, you know, clients don't that are coming to the gym and doing brick and mortar workouts in person, even though we have this app tool, aren't necessarily using it. If they're coming in here three days a week, they don't really need it, right? Mm -hmm. Might throw a couple of workouts in there if they go on vacation or something, but they're really not engaged with the app as it is. So a lot of them have forgotten that it even exists. So we have a client that came in the other day and um, she told Matt, hey, I want to freeze my membership. And instead of like having a, a long conversation about it and making it transactional, Matt's reaction was, well, no, I mean, we're not, nobody's doing that. What we're doing is we're, we're virtually training everyone. So you've got the app, right? And they're like, I think so. He's like, all right, well, I'll, I'll send it over. I'll make sure you got it. You know, even bring it in, show me your phone. You know, we'll get it straightened out mm -hmm. or whatever. I'll call you later. We'll make sure you're on the app. And then we're going to put some workouts in there and hold you accountable through the app. That's what everyone's doing. Yep. And they were like, oh, okay, cool. That was it. That's leadership, right? Mm -hmm. So it's understanding like what, what I have available to me. And you, you know that because of course you were part of building that, but we've also coached that to the team. So everyone right. should know what's available, what's all involved right. with the online play. And then in that meeting, we role played exactly that conversation because the team needs to understand they're the ones on the front line. They're going to be getting these questions. Right. So role play it in the meeting. And so Matt's like, all right, ask me. And so we had a role play and Matt role played exactly that. And everyone's like, oh, okay, cool. That's really cool. That's leadership, right? Yeah. And that's team leading team, if you will. Yeah. So you kind of help get that message out. This is what we're going to run to. This is a, what you're going to hear from your clients. Your whole team then takes it and then everybody's on the same page, right? Yeah. And that constant communication that's consistent. If not, you know, if you're half your cut team is like, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. You just want to cancel. You know, <laughs> that's going to be a problem, right? Yeah. And you have to give the team that confidence that you built at home as a leader that you passed along to your team. They're going to pass along to the clientele. Mm -hmm. And so if you say to them, Hey, there are people that are charging three times what we charge for online training before this whole thing started. This is a fair price. This is all we're putting into it. Think about your, you know, think about your level of expertise and what all goes into this, right? This is right. worth it. And they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. You know? And then here's how we role play, how we talk about it. And they're fully bought in because of the messaging and the confidence around it. It's a completely different animal, right? Mm -hmm. And we're all saying the same thing. So I think the greatest compliment that we've had in the last few days is a, we're in the Bible belt. So we'll appreciate this. But I had a client say, you know, Rick, uh, you know, I got to hand it to you. Your team is all singing from the same hymn, which essentially means if you're not from the Bible belt, that means <laughs> that we're all, all on the same page. <laughs> if you're not a religious person or a Christian person, that's what that means. So it means that we're all on the same page mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we're all saying the same things. And I mean, I, I was like, I thought I was going to, you know, my heart was going to burst out of my chest with pride because that's a, that's a great, reflection of our overall team, you know, not necessarily a me, but like, Hey, I, I might've done something right to get this built and then look at you guys and look what you're doing. And how important is that to the customer when it's the same message from everyone? Yeah. I mean, right? it's important all the time, but in times like where we're at today, it can't be any more important because you know, people are already nervous. They're already maybe a little scared and you got different messages coming out. You're in a heap of trouble. Yeah. So if imagine this as a leader, if you stand strong to your team and then your team stands strong to the customers, what does that look like? It's like you become this pillar mm -hmm. of health and fitness, sort of a bright spot in all this whirlwind of activity, right? Of negative activity. So it's really important that your team is consistent. How do you do that? It goes back to those meetings. Have the team meetings, role play the things that you need to talk about. Hey, when somebody says this, we say this. What do we say if they're really nervous? What do we say if this? Right. What if they don't want to come in? And we just walk our way through. And I think our meetings recently have been more open than any of our other meetings. It's yeah. like, hey, we're all in this together, right? Yeah. It's like the guy from the um, you know, the the Ritz Carlton Hotel said, I heard him on a podcast. He's like, we're ladies and gentlemen servicing ladies and gentlemen, right? Mm -hmm. So we all sit there in a group as a group of peers, right? Yeah. Not shoving anything top down and say, what are you hearing from the clients? All right, how do we want to solve that? And somebody will inevitably be like, well, you know, I think if we go here and I'm like, all right, is everybody cool with that? Yeah, okay. So from now on, you guys, this is what we're saying. And we all like nod and we high five. And I know that certainly our last few meetings, you could tell there was a bit of tension in the group at the start, but when everyone left, everyone just felt, I could feel a sense of relief sure. for everyone. Yeah, it's absolutely. like, okay, we're okay. You know, we're all on the same page. I got a group of people that's working with me. I'm not on an Island. We have the same challenges, but we have a consistent message and we have a plan of attack. Well, I mean, maybe take for granted that say everybody on our team or if your team may be thinking the same way you do, or is aware of um, that so we have fixes for some of these problems, right? So that's obviously important to the meeting, but letting them talk it out and ask, voice their concerns or about it. And that's how you get everybody on kind of on the same page and together. It can't be just like, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do, right? Nobody's going to buy into that. No. Yeah. And it has, and don't forget your team is the one that's on the front line. So mm -hmm. it's easy for me when I'm prepping at home, like getting my mind right and all those things that when I come to 
um, work that I have this kind of idea, but it's real important that there's buy-in from the team and that they have, they are bought into the process. And that means they're part of the process with mm-hmm. you. If not, they're not going to get the buy-in. It's going to seem like something you contrived in a cave that may not seem applicable to them. Or they're like, Oh, it sounds good to you, but you're not the one out there talking to all the clients. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, think about who's working the desk right now. So we've got somebody, Haley, who's really dynamic. It works at the desk and she is the front front line. She's taking calls from people that are like, Hey, I'm not coming in. How do I cancel? What do I do with my sessions? And if those people don't have answers to those questions, right. what do you expect them to do? Like mm-hmm. it, it would be so unfair for me to be frustrated if there was an answer that didn't match what we wanted to do. Like, Oh no, why would you say that? Da, da, da. All right. You know better than that. Well, do they, I mean, come on, like talk about it. Let them openly discuss all the questions they have. And to you, the answers might seem so simple and you might think to yourself, wow, we should have known this, but guess what? We're in uncharted water. So no one knows the answers to these questions that mm-hmm. your team doesn't, you probably don't even right. So it's your job to put a set of lenses on everyone that, that gives them the opportunity to, to make, clients happy right then and not have to be like, well, I don't really know. You know, we're, we're trying to figure that out. It's like, well, look, here's the lens that we're wearing. You're a smart person. Like right. go at it this way. What did you say? And sometimes I'll tell you things from the desk and the floor come back up that are just, you know, game changing for us. Honestly, mm-hmm. Like where we're like, Oh gosh, I didn't even think about that. All right. That's a change we need to make. So what do you guys suggest we're going to do about this? It's mm-hmm. like, all right, well let's do these three things. Right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, this seems like a lot of woo woo stuff, but it's so important, Matt, like you said, no more important than it is right now. So if you're a leader first, I'd say, own it, get your, get your own self in a right frame of mind to yep. lead, then lead your team be open and available, you know, project that confidence to them so that they can then project that down to your customers. And with your customers, same idea. You can't communicate too much emails, private Facebook, Mm -hmm. in in, in person conversation. We just did a podcast on online training, you know, that as well. Um, And then ultimately that's about all you can do in a time of crisis. But I think in a time of crisis, leadership is more important than ever. Absolutely. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you.